Hello all and welcome to another metal casting project. Uh, this is a project I've been uh, meaning to do for some time now because uh, I really want a sand rammer and the strike is kind of a bonus. Um, so uh, I'm going to be doing this out of aluminium and I'm going to be melting hard drive casings. Now these are all pretty decent quality aluminium. Uh, everything has been taken out apart from maybe like a little sticker that will burn off. The paint will burn off. And that will be a quite decent amount of, uh, of good quality aluminium in there. So I was watching uh, a video by SW Dweeb uh, who designed uh, this sand rammer uh, pattern. And um, uh, he, uh, he made himself a new one. I think I watched this video a couple of times. And um, Julian HG also uh, used this same pattern. And uh, this is actually his design. His uh, logo is on there. He actually sent me this. I, I placed a comment in uh, uh, SW Dweeb's video saying, uh, oh, I don't have a 3D printer. I want to make a sand rammer as well. I will probably be making this pattern out of wood, which should be easy enough. Um, and, and then go from there. And uh, then Julian HG said, oh, I don't need my pattern anymore. I'll send you mine. So yeah, I, uh, I got his pattern now. And it has his logo on it. I thought of sanding this down and making it smooth. But I'm going to leave it on there as a little tribute to Julian HG. I'm also going to be keeping this pattern uh, for now at least. Until maybe someone else needs it or wants it. Um, and maybe I'll, uh, I'll cast a couple. Uh, I don't know. So uh, the other side I will keep smooth. Or probably smooth down. Maybe uh, acid etch my logo on it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Well, as you can tell, I got a couple of extra uh, pieces of wood here, and um, the amount of green sand I have over there, the full tote, uh, when compressed, goes all in there, and is going to be extremely heavy and uh, annoying to lift. So I'm going to be putting uh, these uh, wooden beams in there and um, making the compartment uh, slightly smaller, so there's less sand to be rammed. And um, yeah, I will, I'll leave enough uh, room for sprues and feeders and, and whatnot. So uh, let me go and uh, adjust uh, the flasks and uh, then start with the sand ramming. Let's make a new tapered sprue first. I made this one uh, out of a uh, wooden dowel and uh, it works okay for uh, smaller projects, but when uh, needing bigger quantities, it's just quite too small. I basically just put put it inside the drill, not this one, another one. This is my dumpster find. I'm going to see how well that performs uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I basically put that in there and just sand it down the whole thing until it became uh, yeah, cone-shaped. So uh, a uh, tapered sprue. Now I'm going to be using a slightly thicker dowel. I think uh, this is one centimeter, this is two centimeters, uh, close to, uh, what's that, three, three quarters of an inch. And um, uh, this doesn't fit in there, so I'm going to have to get the, a small part sanded off or, or cut off. Should work. Looks stable enough. Let's start with uh, some coarse 80 grit. Also a dumpster die find, by the way. Not sure if I got that on video. But here it goes. Let's see if this drill performs any better.
That is not bad. Well, that took me about five minutes. I'm gonna keep going with this and I'll see you uh, when this, uh, this thing is done and we'll go to the next step. Yeah, I'm trying to work here. Who had a haircut? Who had a haircut? Who needs a bath? Ooh. Well, come, let's go outside. Out. Bye bye. There, so got my flasks adjusted. Now to get the patterns rammed in. I put uh, the side with the logo on the bottom because that usually comes out best, the bottom part. And if there's going to be shrinkage, it's usually on the top, so it better be on the smooth side so I can maybe grind that off if uh, there's not too much of it. This is the bottom part, so that gets a lid so that it doesn't fall out. Right, now comes the slightly more difficult part. Let me clamp that and uh, then proceed with the sand bramming. I just realized I completely forgot to use the baby powder on the other side. I'm just going to continue and uh, see what happens. So uh, let's do, do it on this side. All right, so my ready-made new sprue will go somewhere here there i'm gonna use a very big feeder this uh, plastic bottle will do nice will do nicely there that should work and then my pouring basin will be there and the pouring basin for the strike will be here and the sprue for the strike will go there, which is slightly smaller. There we go. So this doesn't need to be on there. This, this doesn't need to be on there. Oh, I forgot to make an exit for for both of these. Uh, let's see. For the strike, I'll just put this big nail here. And for sand rammer, I'll put the small copper tube. over here there Okay, I got it flattened out and cleaned up as much as I uh, possibly could, I think. Let's uh, place some of the pouring basins and then open it up and remove the patterns. 
and then make some uh, channels and stuff. So this is the feeder for or the, the sprue for the for the strike. So I'm gonna be pouring here. Yeah. And the sprue for the sand rammer is this one. So I'm going to be pouring here. Let's dig those out. I made this one way deeper. Now for this thing, let's see if we can get this out without mashing the whole thing apart. Yeah. Right, Let's see if I can salvage this. This should be fine, I hope. Right, let's open her up. Right, so this side is where I'm going to make all the channels and uh, get rid of this parting line here a bit. So the feeder actually has a little lip here, which shouldn't be there. So this is the sprue that feeds in here. Make sure that this is a nice big entrance. And then there's the exit, which will not be that sophisticated. Good thing about this part, if anything goes wrong here, a bit of grinding, just make it slightly shorter and should all be fine. Right, uh, now for the strike, this side is the exit, so again, not that interesting. That should be more than enough. Now this, I put kind of far away from the whole thing. Strike is not the main thing in this project, so... But, still hoping that it will come out pretty decent. Alright, that's for this part. Let's uh, get the patterns out of the other part. That came out pretty decent. Not bad considering that uh, I didn't use any parting powder. 
actually just about nothing got stuck in here. That is good. Now let's see if we can get rid of this parting line here. There. This is uh, quite good. Oh, I lost a few. Right, all clamped up and set on a raised surface so that I don't have to pour from very high. Now it's time to melt some hard drives. All right, let's light this thing on fire here. Right, that looks kind of on fire. I got uh, uh, six big hard drives in there and uh, four laptop hard drives and two aluminium lids. So that's a good start, I guess. The hard drives have become soft drives. A couple more minutes and I can add a few more. Nice pool of molten aluminium at the bottom. This fills up way quicker than when melting cans. Kind of like a happy face.
And down goes the hard drive. I think I'm gonna add like four or five more and then uh, skim some draws and see what I got. I'm gonna heat up some ingot molds just in case. Uh, if there's any left, I'm gonna pour me some uh, hard drive bullion. Oh, quite a lot of the fluffy stuff. Let's give it a little bit more with the lid on. Let me set you up at the pour. There, I got everything set up. Got a couple of extra molds if I have any spares. My two main ingot molds, a small cake mold and the, the, the fish. I'm probably not going to get that far, but we'll never know. I'm going to get the crucible, set it there, then pour, and we'll see what comes out. Let's see. It's filling up nicely and I see some down here even now for the strike wonder if that will work I think that froze there we go well this looks good ingots then Not enough for the big one, let's try the fish. Uh, not enough for the fish even. Oh. I'm gonna put the crucible back in uh, the furnace and uh, maybe melt the rest of the hard drive. Now, this is probably, oh right, this is burning the wood, I forgot about that. Ooh, fish came out like a guppy. Clean this mess up and uh, we'll dig out uh, the project later. Alright, clamps are off. This has had at least 15 minutes to uh, solidify and uh, cool a bit. Uh, I expected way more shrinkage here, so I hope the whole thing uh, worked. On the other hand, you can also have shrinkage at the bottom of the thing, so let's hope the shrinkage is in here and not in the main thing. We'll see. Oh wow, the strike did fill out. That filled fast. I thought that would never reach the other end. That went quick, wow. Look at that, you can see the imprint of the bottom of the plastic bottle. Julian's logo looks awesome. And there's, as far as I can tell, no sand inclusion or whatever. And even the strike looks kind of okay. It's probably missing some teeth here and there, but uh, we'll see. Right, 
Let's see if I can dig this thing out. That is awesome actually. I think all of the teeth formed I will probably be I will probably be able to like grind this out a bit using a file and get uh, all the teeth on there the correct way. Let's not yet touch this. <laughs> no idea this was working actually. I was thinking I had to recast the whole thing. Now this I'm also very happy with that at the very end part I saw this little blob so I knew it was completely full now I know this side is okay tiny specks of sand maybe in there but the logo is uh, okay for the most part let me get this a bit lower here uh, I'm kind of worried about the other side if there's no sh real shrinkage in there. And there isn't. Not a single bit, I think. Look at that. It's completely flat and smooth. Gonna require some grinding along. Uh, the, the flash line, the, the edges, this came out way better than expected. Let me get a bucket of water and crunch this stuff so I can hold it. There we go. Start with these ingots that I've probably cooled off quite a bit. There. Let's get this there in there. My furnace is still going in the background, I'm, uh, melting the last couple of hard drives and turning those into ingots. Yeah, this does require a slight bit of grinding and filing, but for the most part I'm pretty happy with this. to cool there I think I'll be able to touch it now yeah wow this worked very well I like uh, the fact that Julian's logo is on there I'm gonna keep that on there because uh, he uh, was uh, nice enough to send me the pattern kind of like a little um, homage to him or tribute and there are tiny specks of sand that got in here, here and there. But other than that, I mean, even the top. F funny thing here, by the way, hold on, let me see if you can see. This little dimple there, that's the impression of my nail. Because I actually wanted to try to get a speck of uh, sand out and I accidentally hit the side with my nail. Uh, you can even see the pattern of the 3D print that came out uh, with this sand and it's just very fine uh, birdcage sand with uh, uh, close to like a bit, somewhere between 10 and 12 percent bentonite uh, clay which is ground up kitty litter uh, some sand got in here but overall I'm, I'm very content with this I'm going to uh, quickly grind this off uh, so that I can, uh, because my furnace is still going, so that I can toss this in uh, with the rest and turn it back into some ingots. This hard drive uh, aluminium is, uh, is pretty, pretty decent stuff.
That brick is probably gonna break. There we go. Fishy. Come on. That was completely full. Right. Another one. Come out, come out. There we go. Nice and shiny. Probably standing in the shot. And a piece of crap fell in there. There we go, on the floor. Hello. Oh. Just gone thick. Fish with a fat tail. There we go. There. A lot easier. The big one I'm gonna wait a bit. Uh, let, let me uh, pile everything up and uh, grind off the sprues and feeders of the strike and, uh, and, the, and the sand rammer and show you the results when it's all cooled down and piled up. So at the end of this project, this is what all that was left of all the hard drives. Now there were about 50 hard drives. I have some slivers left in the crucible. I have my big feeders and some of the pouring basins and sprues and whatnot. I wanted to remelt those and turn those into ingots, but I ran out of coal. This is all the slag that I got out so far. I uh, left them in neat little bundles. This is like half the weight of uh, of this because it's mostly, well, fluff. This is the foamy stuff that uh, floats to the top. I will remelt this at some point probably. Maybe like after I remelt this. And this is what I got out of this. I got two of these nice big cake ingots. Nicely angled. I got uh, four, seven, ten. Not all of them are as thick as the next, but ten nice ingots, two fish, and the main project, of course, was the strike and the sand rammer. Now, I did sand this down, and as you can see, quite some pitting and porosity in there. But that doesn't really matter. I'm uh, just surprised that this thing came out in one piece. Now the teeth I probably gonna have to uh, clean up with my Dremel, especially these. But uh, for the most part, this came out pretty dang well for something that I thought had failed. But the main thing, let me sit down here. There we go. The main thing, the sand rammer, I gave it a nice, uh, a nice polish, and uh, I didn't do that much of the of the shaft here. Uh, got the the print lines still in there for the most part. I did get rid of the tiny bit of flashing that was there. This, there is some. It keeps focusing on the ingots. Great. Yeah, just angle this down more. Right. So there was some uh, flashing, and there is some pitting, and uh, not sure if it is porosity because there's very little of it when uh, when sanding this down. I gave it a nice, uh, smooth, rounded off tip. 
and this will uh, this will work fine for uh, for ramming the sand a lot better than my uh, standard bench hammer. And this side I left it the way it was. This little pit here is a nail uh, imprint. Uh, I uh, got in there in the mold one trying to get a little bit of sand or dust out. I don't really remember. Um, but yeah, this, this part I can sand all smooth if I want, kind of like uh, the other sides. Kind of like this side, this is all sanded smooth. And there's no porosity. There's get keep getting little spots there. This is not a hole. This is just a spot. Well, it's completely flat. Now Julian's logo came out pretty decent. Tiny little sand inclusion spots there, but uh, nothing really worth mentioning. This uh, is his, his handy fist, as he called it. So, um, big thanks to uh, SW Dweeb for designing this and making this 3D print available. Now, I don't have a 3D printer and Julian was nice enough to send me his 3D printed patterns. That's why his logo is on here, which I will keep on there. So, thank you Julian for sending this over. I'm uh, very pleased with the results. I'm uh, very eager to start working with this thing. And thank you both for the awesome videos, because uh, I learned a lot from uh, both of you and so, uh, from many other people that uh, I watch, but mainly for, for metal casting and, and the, the whole sand casting. Uh, I, uh, I watch uh, Julian HG and uh, SW Dweeb, also known as Perry. Thank you for watching, see you on the next one.